Hi there, Massimo from the Blue Root team. And today I want to show you a fairly advanced feature, but I would say in the last hundred projects we've done, this has been asked 20 to 30 times. So I wanted to make a YouTube video on it showing you how to do this. Uh, it can really change the way you work. And it's specifically targeted towards people who have external users, uh, field service people who are fixing things, uh, who are maybe installing things. Um, and you want them to be able to enter data back into the CRM without necessarily buying them a license. They might not need the CRM on an everyday basis, but they will want to fill out a few details and have it update the CRM. Keep in mind that as I'm doing this, we've also used it in the use case where a, for example, a mortgage broker could send out this automation to their client and say, hey, it's been two years since we worked together. Do you still live at the same address? Have your debt financing needs changed? Things of that nature. So this can be used as a client facing form or a internal staff that doesn't necessarily need a CRM facing form. And the idea behind it is you can automate a form that goes out to a client or a staff member that automatically has detail about, for example, the deal or the client or the account within the form. That user can then fill out the form and it updates the CRM. So in order to do that, you hear me mentioning form a lot, you will need the app called Zoho Forms. If you're on Zoho One, this is a no brainer. You can watch our video on how to set up Zoho Forms. Uh, if you're not, go ahead and purchase Zoho Forms and I'm gonna walk you through what to do. So I'm gonna use the use case that I am a field service person and I am looking to, for example, uh, repair a sink. And my staff or my head office has just sent me a form to repair a sink and I need to update data back within the CRM to tell them I'm done. So me as the admin, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new form and I'm gonna call it repair checklist. Now that I'm on this page, you can start building the checklist. So number one, uh, I might bring in a single line here and call it repair name, and this will come in handy later. Uh, I'm also going to bring in the date, repair date. And then for the actual uh, person that's on site, I might make them do a few things. So first of all, I'll make them make sure that the client is there and make them verify the first and last name of that client. Um, so I might put a section here and call it verification details, right? So first and last name and um, I don't know, maybe their email address. So while your technician's there, just make them make sure that the first and last name and email are the same as what you have on file. And this will make sense in a minute. Now I'll make another section called repair details and I'll bring in a multi-line that kind of explains what the repair is, right? So now your technician will see what they need to repair. And then I might bring in another section called verification or verified fix, right? And, oops. And I might make the technician put a drop down, say status, and I'll put the default is not fixed. The medium is need to order parts. And the final is fixed. So what I've done here is I've quickly made a form that you can send to a technician that this I'll talk about, but they won't technically be able to see it. They'll be able to see this. They'll be able to see this and they got to fill out this. Right, and maybe one more, I'll make them put an image to show that they actually fixed it, image proof. Um, they can upload whatever they want, they can upload up to three files. And then last but not least, we might make them make the client sign that they are done. Client signature. Oh. Okay. So now I've created a form. And in this video, I'm not gonna show you how to make it pretty and all of that, we'll have separate videos on that. But just to show you what the form looks like, this is what it looks like. Very standard, great. So now you gotta get a bit more advanced with this. So number one, like I said, we're gonna hide these fields. So I'm gonna hit hide and hide. 
So now the technician will not actually be able to see these fields. See, they can just see verification details. The next thing we're going to do is work on something fairly advanced called field aliases. So you're going to hit settings and then you're going to go to field alias. Inside of here, I'm going to set a new field alias and the repair name, I'm going to call it name. And so basically what this is, is they're hidden fields within the URL of the form that will send data into the URL. At a high level, what that means is these will allow you to pre-fill the form from the CRM. So repair name, name, I'm going to add another one here. I'm going to call it repair date, date. And then we're also going to pre-fill the first name. And what I'm doing here is using what's called camel case. So don't put any spaces because it's weird in URLs if you do that. Um, every new word, just make a capital letter. Okay. And then last name. And then I'm also going to send up the repair details. And I'm basically going to send up everything, email. So all of this is going to be pre-filled for the technician when it comes up from the CRM. So now I'm going to hit save. So now what I've done is I've created field aliases. And so this is really important because now when I hit access form, what you can actually do at the end here, and I'll show you, there's a little how to here. So you're going to go to this and you can see it explains it here. So for example, you're basically going to put a question mark at the end of the link and then the field alias you just made equals and then a merge field. So let me show you how this works. So here's the URL we made, right? If I put question mark and then equals, sorry, it's not equals first. Let me grab the alias. <clears throat> so the first one, let's do date. Uh, no, let's do name. So we'll do question mark name equals and then paste it. See how it's still loaded and everything was fine? So now what I'm going to do is put something in repair details. So then I'll go and what did I call it? Details, details. It's good habits of copy paste stuff here. Equals a bunch of stuff. Now when I hit enter, watch. All that stuff goes in there. So this is how you pre-fill things into a URL with what are called field aliases, right? So the pattern is question mark, then the alias, then equals, then the data, and then ampersand, the alias, equals, then the data, then ampersand, alias, equals, the data. Continued. So what you now have to do, and the handy way I do this, is I create it in the CRM. So I'll take this, oops, from right here, before the question mark. I'm going to go into the CRM, and on the left-hand side, you can actually create what is called a link. So now I'm inside the deal. I'm going to call this field um, repair checklist. And so now I can build the URL here. It's a really handy tool. So now, what was the first thing I wanted? Name. So that's the, oops, that's the deal name. So we're going to take that, and we're going to go name equals, then you're going to take the deal name. Then you're going to go ampersand and then we're going to get the next one, repair date. And for the, and I called it date, right? So for this example, I'm just going to put the closing date and then ampersand. So what this is doing is merging fields in here. So this can be dynamic. Any deal, this will work, right? First name, go back, first name equals, and then I'm going to take the first name from within here. So contacts name, ampersand equals, and then, so I should have just made this one name. When you're working with the deal, I made a little mistake here. You can't have first name and last name. So just make this one name. Email, I'm going to take this. should have it. If it doesn't, what you're going to do, just skip that one. So we're not going to put the email here. 
And then, so I'm gonna delete this one. I was making it for the contact when I first made it. And so we'll just do details. And maybe for details, what we'll do is we'll just throw something random in for now. Uh, but you can throw whatever you'd want. So dietary request, for example. So now I've built my link. So if I were to click this, you'll see that the form will be pre-populated with testing project. It'll be pre-populated with the contact name. Let me put a contact here, Massimo. Um, and under dietary restrictions, it'll be populated as well. So now when I hit this, here you go. Full name, repair details, etc. So you can see that it looks like details I messed up. See here, so this is a good way to catch things. What I didn't do is put an equal sign after details. So let me go back to my link. And in order to edit these links, what you have to do is hit settings and then modules. Go to the module you created it for. And then there's a button here for links. So we're gonna edit this and you'll see here. Yeah, there it is. I forgot my equal sign, right? So once you've built this link, now when someone receives it, it'll pre-fill data, right? So this is step one. Now you can send this out in a workflow. So you can take that exact link and put it in a workflow email template, or you can just have it within the service call here, right? So if I go back into the service call and I actually click this link, it'll fill in everything properly now because I put the equals. So this is what your technician would receive. So now to bring it all back, what we're gonna do is inside of Zoho Forms, we're gonna go to integrations. And then you're gonna integrate it back with Zoho CRM. You're gonna choose the module you wanna integrate it back to. And now you will have to map a few fields. So you could see here, we're gonna do the name. And then we do have to bring the stage back as well. So in this case, you're gonna have to make one more field alias for stage, bring it up ampersand stage equals bring up the stage and then map the stage here. And then the last thing I'd say is to upsert records and do it by the name. So basically that means, this is only if you want, that means it'll actually bring data back into the CRM and overwrite data and then hit integrate. Now you've successfully made an automated form, goes up into Zoho Forms pre-filled with data. When someone hits submit, comes back down into CRM you can tell it to attach with the signature and update the record. And now you have a full service external app. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and let me know if you want more videos like this. Cheers.